The idea of making and testing flight models has been around for centuries, from Leonardo da Vinci's sketches to the Wright brothers' historic flight. The use of models has driven forward our knowledge of aviation. Today, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, known as NASA, is at the forefront of flight discovery. And just like the FPG-9, NASA made a glider too, called the Space Shuttle. That's right, the Space Shuttle is actually a very advanced glider. It does leave the Earth as a rocket, but it's powerless on its return through the atmosphere. In the early stages of the shuttle program, NASA needed a very long runway to land on. Enter NASA Dryden Flight Research Center, home to one of the longest runways in the world. With these open skies and this vast runway, you can see why the shuttle has landed here 54 times. Scientists at Dryden work to solve problems associated with NASA missions. But everyone that does this for a living today started out by daydreaming about it when they were in school. Kids can get a taste of what it's like to work on a NASA shuttle mission at Challenger centers across the country. Three of them are in Indiana. Students and teachers have been working for years on skills that we know are important and skills that we know students are going to need for the future, for their careers. Challenger centers like this one near Indianapolis were designed to demonstrate science in action. We have eight different positions for a mission and everyone serves in mission control as well as in space. Mission control is a scaled down model of the real mission control in Houston, Texas. Our mission control is about one third the size of the real mission control. We acknowledge over here. This is the best because the kids don't know they're in here working. They don't know they're in here learning. They think they're coming in here to have fun and they get into that role and they take on their jobs. And then at the end we discuss what just happened and they realize that they were using all those school skills they've been working on for years. On this mission, students learn firsthand how important our work with glider models has been to the shuttle program. The orbiter is simply a glider. Even though it looks like a jet, a lot of folks think that it's going to return to Earth like a jet, but that isn't how it operates. We are bringing in a, a speeding bullet, and as soon as we get into our atmosphere, that's it. There's no turning back. We're using gravity to land. Welcome home, Columbia. Beautiful, beautiful. The space shuttle, the most famous glider, lands here at Edwards Air Force Base. And since it's a glider, it has no power to get back to Kennedy Space Center. That's where this 747 comes into play. Big on the outside, big on the inside. In fact, it's so large that the Wright brothers' first powered flight would have fit inside of this 747 SCA. The NASA shuttle is a glider but it's not the only one being used today. Here in Indiana, at the Alexandria Airport, gliders can be found soaring the skies every weekend. Yeah, I was a guy flying. Because at my school are just like, not really believing that a 13 year old is just already flying a plane, let alone a plane without a motor. As we know, a glider does not have an engine. These glider aircraft are designed to use the dynamic reaction of air over the control surfaces to fly.
glider pilots can even use meteorological forces to maintain or even gain altitude. When we soar, we fly in thermals, which keep us up. And thermals are heat of uh, rising air coming up, what makes those big puffy clouds. You can actually feel the rising warm air helping you lift that aircraft, which is a pretty amazing thing because that aircraft plus you is well over a thousand pounds. These gliders need to get into the air to fly. In quite a few NASA designed tests, a bigger plane called a mothership is used to get something up into the air and drop it. Here the same principle applies. The mothership at Alexandria is a Piper Pawnee. They call it a tow plane. This is the same type of plane used for crop dusting and banner pulling. It doesn't go very fast, but it has a lot of power, which enables it to carry a somewhat heavy load, or in this case, tow one. The glider is attached to the tow plane with a rope and pulled into the air. Ready for takeoff. This may be a record. It's the first time that we've ever had a, a glider inside of a glider. When the glider is at the pilot's desired altitude, a release lever inside the cockpit of the glider is pulled. The tow plane goes one way, the glider goes another. At this point, the glider is on its own, flying without an engine. When you get flying, it's just the best feeling you ever have. It's a feeling of being absolutely free. There's nothing really holding you back in the air. You can do anything up there. Gliders have been an important tool for aviators to understand flight. 